The Committee of the Whole is called to order without objection. All amendments which have been distributed will not be read in full. Hearing none, so ordered. The clerk will read the first bill on the calendar to get together with committee recommendations. Plus 2010, Mr. Speaker, Committee on Banking and Insurance and Consideration, Plus 2010 recommended to do pass. Mr. Speaker, Committee on Rules and Consideration, Plus 2010 recommends bills constitutional and proper in form. Chair recognizes uh, Representative Ugenti Rita. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that when the committee hold rises to report, I recommend that HB 2010 do pass. Any uh, comment? No, it's a great bill. I hope members support it. Thank you. The question before you then is uh, the that House Bill oh, right. 2010 be adopted. I'm sorry? Somebody on the screen. Okay, there is Ms. Epstein. I apologize, Ms. Epstein. You are going on and off, so I don't know what's happening here. Okay, uh, Ms. Epstein, did you have a question? Yes. Mr. Chair, I have a question for the sponsor. Okay, uh, Ms. Ugent Representative Ugenti Rita, do you yield to a question from Representative Epstein? I, I yield, but I would like to yield with the caveat that if I'm going to yield, I would appreciate then maybe she yield eventually in the future if someone were to ask. Representative Epstein, Ms. <laughs> Representative Ugenti Rita, yields to your question. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Genti Rita. Would you just clarify, as I understand this bill, which you, all you've said is that it's great, um, but, but as I understand it, it would take people off of the AR SRS. The, it would take people off of the retirement system. Is that correct? Mr. Chair, Representative um, Epstein, that is incorrect. Uh, it's but prospective only. So it does not take anyone out. Those would be grandfathered in, and it would only preclude new hires from entering. Uh, Mr. Chair, may I make a comment? Representative Epstein, you may make a comment. Mr. Chair, thank you, Mr. Genti, also for that answer. Uh, important clarification. So the bill would preclude letting new people come onto the system who are in certain categories, and I'd like to draw our, all of your attention to an article from 2013 about this topic in the Capital Times. Uh, Leslie Sorensen, who apparently spoke all about the retirement system, told the Cap Times that um, only a fraction of their members actually work for political subdivisions. And she also said that any time membership decreases, it has a negative impact to the fund that if one group of people can no longer enroll, then everybody in the system will have to pay more. And that kind of coincides with my understanding how, of how actuar setting, actuarially setting premiums for any kind of a such fund, that's how it works. If you have fewer people in the system, it costs everybody else more. And for those reasons, and many others, I would urge a no vote on this bill. Thank you, Representative Epstein. Representative Ugenti Rita. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> members, it's political subdivision entities that would be precluded from entering, not political, uh, not employees okay, of political subdivisions. This is closing comments, right? This is closing comments. Yes, I'm closing with comments. Um, so, what are political subdivision entities? Uh, the League of Cities and Towns employees are in ASRS. Uh, Arizona Association of Counties, Arizona County uh, uh, Insurance Pool, uh, the MAGs, the PAGs. These are individuals currently in ASRS. Um, <clears throat> and I would like to prohibit them prospectively because they're not, they're not government entities. They're not defined in government as a political subdivision. They don't have any statutory authority. We cannot regulate them the way that we do agencies. They're not um, statutorily defined um, in, in terms of a, pl a public, uh, like a public subdivision is. And it's not just my opinion. Members, it's the opinion of the AG. Um, I have an AG's opinion from uh, 2004. And I'm just gonna read it because I think it sums it up pretty nicely. 
Uh, although some Arizona statutes have recognized the existence, the existence of COGS and regional planning um, agencies, no constitutional or statutory provision expressly, uh, expressly authorizes their creation. Rather, the members typically form nonprofit corporations. These organizations are 501c4s, and that's great. They do great work. I'm glad they're around. It's really nice when organizations come together, work with the surrounding communities, work with neighboring political subdivisions, and come, to come, come up with you know, transportation and regional transportation plans. I think you need that. But in terms of them being allowed to be an ASRS, no. Um, they shouldn't have been in there in the first place. They got caught. Now, it was codified by the legislature, but I think the legislator got it wrong, and I'm looking to fix it. Thank you, Representative Eugenti Rita. Chair recognizes Representative Butler if you have a question on her closing comment. I, d I do. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chair, I rise to ask a question of Representative Eugenti Rita. Thank you, Representative Butler. Representative Eugenti Rita, do you yield to a question? Yes, sir. Representative Butler, she yields to a question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative Eugenti Rita, you just read um, from the Attorney General's opinion, um, and I, I don't think that I, I feel it's important and wanted to find out if you would please clarify what happened in 2004 that made that opinion, um, what happened in the legislature that, that made that opinion rather irrelevant now. Representative Eugenti Rita. Uh, yes, um, Mr. Chair, uh, Representative, the, le the legislator disregarded it. And they caught, like I think I just said in my closing comments, they ended up codifying the current practice of allowing them to be in there. But that doesn't negate the relevancy of the opinion. And I think the legislature, like I made in my closing comments, got it wrong. Representative Thank Butler. You. Thank you, Representative Eugenterita. Okay, the question before you then is that House Bill 2010 receive a due pass recommendation. All those in favor, vote aye. All those opposed, vote nay. It appears the ayes have it, do have it so ordered. Clerk will read the next bill on the calendar. House Bill 2436, Mr. Speaker, you have any appropriations under consideration. House Bill 2436, recommended due pass. Mr. Speaker, you have any rules under consideration. House Bill 2436 recommends constitutional proper and form. Chair recognizes Representative Claude Felter. I don't know if he's in the, uh, in the room here, so if somebody would move his bill. Mr. Allen. Mr. Chairman, I move, when the Committee of the Whole Rise and Report, it recommends House Bill 2436 be given a due pass recommendation. Thank you, any discussion? Seeing none, the question before you then is, that House Bill 2436 receive a due pass recommendation. All those in favor vote aye. All those polls vote nay. Appears the ayes have it, do have it so ordered. Clerk, read the next bill on the calendar. House Bill 2498, Mr. Speaker, Committee on Appropriations <laughs> under consideration. House Bill 2498 recommended to pass. Mr. Speaker, Committee on Rules under consideration. House Bill 2498 recommends constitutional proper and form. Thank you. Chair will recognize Representative Livingston. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move in the committee hall rises to report. It recommends HB 2498, a due pass recommendation. Thank you, Representative. Did you want to uh, move your floor amendment also? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move the, my floor amendment and my name to this bill be adopted also. Comment? Nope. Any discussion? Seeing none, the question before you is that the Livingston floor amendment be uh, amended to House Bill 2498 um, be adopted. All those in favor vote aye. Aye. All those opposed vote nay. Pierce, the ayes have it. Do have it so ordered. Mr. Livingston? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move in the committee of whole rises to report. It recommends HB 2498, as amended, do pass. Thank you. Any closing comments? Any discussion? Question before you is that House Bill 2498, as amended, receive a do pass recommendation. All those in favor, vote aye. All those opposed, vote nay. Appears the ayes have it, do have it so ordered. Clerk will read the next bill on the calendar. House Bill 2525. Mr. Speaker, your committee on rules under consideration. House Bill 2525 recommends its constitutional proper and form. Mr. Speaker, committee on probes says it recommends Bill 2525 receive due pass. Church recognizes Representative Grantham. There's Representative Grantham right there. We don't waste time up here, sir.
Mr. Chairman, yes, my mic is hot. I move that when the Committee of the Whole rises to report, it recommends House Bill 2525 do pass. Thank you, sir. Uh, any discussion? Ms. Uh, Representative Epstein. Mr. Chair, I have a comment, if I may. Re go ahead, comment. Uh, I've received a lot of information on this bill, and uh, nobody likes to get tickets. I don't either. But I've gotten so much data that shows that they are making places safer. Uh, once uh, Scott Sale sent information that overall crashes were reduced by 23 to 24 percent, and red light running was reduced by 33 to 35 percent. For six road segments, speed photo enforcement overall crashes were reduced by 37 percent. This is making cities safer. But more importantly, could we please let our cities be their this cities. Time after time after time, our people of our cities are just getting tired of this uh, overreach yeah, no, 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 from the legislature. Okay. Yeah. Our cities deserve a chance to be make their own decisions about things like photo radar and any number no, of other things. A... Arizonans are independent, and we want our cities to have a unique flavor. So I stand opposed to this overreach and this bill. Thank you, Representative Epstein. Our chair recognizes Representative Powers Hanley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I rise to ask uh, Representative Grantham if he'll yield to a question. The Representative Grantham, will you yield to a question? Mr. Chair, I will yield to one question. Representative Powers Hanley, he will yield to one question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Grantham. Uh, this is kind of uh, tagging off of what Representative Epstein says. Uh, I was wondering if you had looked at crash data before and after uh, red light cameras were uh, installed in different parts of the state. Representative Grantham. <laughs> Mr. Chair, sorry, I was tangled up and experiencing technical difficulties here. The question pertains to uh, data from uh, Representative uh, well, really, both Powers Hanley and Epstein. And I appreciate the question, because data is a huge part of the equation when we talk about photo radar, what it actually does, what it's capable of doing. We had this discussion at length in committee, and it was a good discussion. Um, what you find when you really dig is that, like everything in the world, there's data. There's data to show you why something's good. There's data to show you why something's bad. I referenced in committee that if data was always accurate, Hillary Clinton would be president. We talked about the business I'm in of flying where data often is the key component and it can be changed with the shifting of a number or a decimal point or the changing of a letter. And, and, and I always have to take into consideration what the motivation is behind the people who prepare the data. One thing I find very interesting is that the city of Scottsdale has had a very loud voice in this, so has the town of Paradise Valley. This is a direct quote from Darcy Nichols, Scottsdale Photo Enforcement Program Manager, out of a news article that's approximately one years old. There are currently no studies available through the city of Scottsdale that isolate the accident data specific to photo enforcement locations. She said in a January 6th written response to emailed questions, American Traffic Solutions could possibly supply you with trending information related to the number of violations captured and citations issued at each location. There really is not good data that proves this makes our cities safer. It is a great talking point, and if I was arguing to keep photo radar in place, I would state the same exact thing. Thank you. Representative Powers Hanley. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, may I make a comment? You may make a comment. Okay, thank you, and thank you, uh, Representative Grantham. Uh, in the city of Tucson, we've had two waves of getting rid of photo enforcement uh, cameras. Once, uh, a few, um, maybe two years ago or so, getting rid of the speeding cameras on River Road. And they kept the cameras on even though they weren't giving tickets for approximately maybe six months or so after they were officially not giving tickets. And they found that speeding on River Road went up something like 500% after the cameras were shut off. Uh, in a, what I consider a wrong-headed uh, initiative that passed uh, maybe two years ago, uh, the red light running cameras in Tucson have been shut off. Red light running in Tucson is an abomination. 
Again, the city kept on the cameras to count the infractions, even though they weren't giving tickets. There was this one intersection where I happened to get a red light running ticket a few years ago. That, that, red, that, that one intersection, red light running went up 900% within six months after those cameras were turned off. So I would suggest that there is a public health impact of shutting off these cameras, and I support red light running cameras, and I support the, the uh, I am against this bill to get rid of them. Thank you, Representative Powers Hanley. Chair recognizes Representative Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, pro tem. I find myself- Thank, thank you for the promotion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I find myself on the side of Ms. Epstein and Ms. Powers Hanley, which is, may force me to change my mind, <laughs> but I won't, but I won't. Mr. Grantham quoted a 2015 newspaper article. He, of course, didn't look at the latest information, which is April 2016, which is the newest information that Mr. Grantham may have in his position and may have decided to carry off in a plane with him somewhere. The speed at the intersections where speed is checked will allow anywhere from 9 to 10 to 11 miles an hour over the speed limit before the light flashes, which means you're going that much faster than the speed limit, which means you are endangering that many more people. Now, as far as the red light cameras, that red line that is out there in the, in the intersection, you will find that most of the accidents that happen in those intersections happen when someone is making a left turn and an individual is going through a light and crosses that red line and should have a picture taken and does, and there's an accident. The, the, uh, the motivation that people talk about, the motivation for anger at these tickets is, I got a ticket. I got a ticket, so I am motivated to vote against anything resembling photo radar. It is safety. Our safety is at stake. I have a number of places, good examples, by the way, and I can get this for any of you that want this information. I can get this for you. Um, there were 13 enforced areas that were part of the 216, uh, 2016 survey. For the 13 enforced through movements at intersections, only crashes involving number one vehicle from the enforced approach direction were analyzed. According to the 10th edition of Arizona's Crash Report Forms Instruction Manual published by ADOT, traffic unit number one is the vehicle that caused the collision. Uh, collision. Um, therefore, the crashes analyzed for the 13 enforced were of vehicle number one, the cause of the crash. Just some examples, and I won't go through all of them, but I think it's interesting that at the corner of Frank Lloyd Wright and Greenway Hayden Loop, eastbound, before... Mr. Lawrence, were you going to ask a question, or are you making a comment? No, I have no, I have no question. Okay. I, if, why would, when I'm so positive, would I ask a question? Okay, Mr. Just, just clarifying. <laughs> I will end this momentarily. <laughs> oh, how does it feel to be loved, Jay? 
Now then. Elder, what could you treat an old guy this way? 1914, right. Here then, at that one corner, prior to red light camera, 11.33 crashes per year. After 5.67 crashes. That's just one corner, and there are many in this book. Let me just say, to end my diatribe. 24 that, seconds. That the red light cameras and the speed cameras are more than safety features. They are a constant warning, and there are plenty of signs up to say, speed camera ahead. It's a law. And it is important that those speed cameras, those you, red sir. light cameras, stay in effect. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Chair. Representative Lawrence. Chair recognizes Representative Andrade. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we're Representative Grantham yield to some questions. Representative Grantham, do you yield to questions from Representative? Mr. Chairman, I will yield to one question. Representative Andrade, he yields to one question. Okay, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Grantham, who brought this bill to you? I mean, uh, when it concerns photo radar and, and of course, the uh, red light cameras, who, I mean, what's the story behind this? Because I heard you in testimony in the Appropriations Committee, so. Representative Mr. Grantham. Mr. Chair, I'd, to ask him to further clarify his question, I'd like to know what he's referencing he heard in Appropriations Committee with regards to who brought me the bill. Representative Andrade, Representative Grantham has a question. Okay, because during committee you mentioned who uh, was behind this bill. It was uh, a city that was behind this bill. Is that not correct? Representative Grantham? M Mr. Chair, no, that's incorrect. Okay. Mr. Chairman, well, Mr. Grantham, continue to yield. Representative Grantham, do you continue to yield? Mr. Chair, I will yield to one more question. Representative Andrade, Representative Grantham yields to one more question. Mr. Grantham, I've heard you state several times that in the city of Scottsdale, this has been a big concern. That's why I'm wondering who brought about this bill. Representative Grantham. Mr. Chair, I brought the bill along with a concerned citizen who brought the bill to me. With regards to my referencing to the city of Scottsdale and the town of Paradise Valley, I, I mention those because the loudest voices in the room sometimes get the most attention. And ironically, guess who brings in the most revenue? So it's like that old saying we have in politics where if you really want to know what's driving something when you're hearing things, follow the money. And that likely is why we're hearing that city and or town referenced. Thank you, Representative Grantham. Representative Andrade. And I just want to make sure I have a clarification, Mr. Chairman, that Mr. Grantham will not continue yielding. Representative Grantham. Sir, I would, said I would yield to one. I ended up yielding to two. No more questions from Thank me. you, sir. Representative uh, Andrade, Representative Grantham does not yield to any more questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a comment. Representative Grantham, I'm sorry, Representative Andrade, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You just, I just heard that because Scottsdale and uh, Paradise Valley was complaining about red light cameras and, and this issue, but what about the other cities that are also yelling, that are also saying, hey, we need this kind of protection? Because in close to my district, 35th Avenue and McDowell, and 67th Avenue and McDowell, those red light cameras are protecting lives. There's a school on the corner of 35th Avenue and McDowell. It's a school zone. And the reason they had to install it was for obvious reasons. Children are cross in the crosswalk and they were getting hit. There was too many accidents in that area. The ones on 67th Avenue and McDowell, same thing. Too many injuries, too many accidents, too many fatalities. What this bill is doing is taking control away from our cities. Right here in the city of Phoenix, at 12 intersections that have been identified as having 
some of the highest accident rates in the city because of these cameras. Total red, run red crashes have declined 48% since 2011. And at the selected 12 intersections, an injury and fatality related run red crashes have declined 57% over the same time period. I understand people don't like them. I understand drivers don't like them. But you know why we need them? Because everybody's too busy on this and not paying attention. Too many other distractions instead of paying attention to the road. When I'm out there on a locomotive and I look down on Grand Avenue, I see everybody doing everything except for doing one thing, which means being focused. I've heard in other testimony and other committees, it only takes a few seconds to lose your concentration. That is why I'm against this bill, because we're taking local control. We're taking away protection. We're taking away and allowing bad drivers to be bad drivers. I complain about bad drivers all the time because I have to stay focused when I'm behind a throttle. Shouldn't we be doing the same behind a wheel? Aircraft. We have to pay attention when we're in the cockpit, don't we? We have protections, and there's a reason we have to have those protections. The same applies when it comes to red light cameras. We need them. They need to stay in place. To do away with this, we're taking away the local control from intersections that have been identified that are dangerous. We need them at those intersections. If Scottsdale doesn't want them, then let Scottsdale make that decision. But don't make a decision for the city of Phoenix where it's saving lives. I drive through those intersections. At one time, I bought insurance because of red light runners. I wasn't worried about getting injured on the job. I was worried about getting injured going to and from work. That is why I'm going to encourage everybody to vote no on this bill because it is something that we do not have to eliminate, leave it to the cities. If Scottsdale, once again, and Fountain Hills and all those rich areas decide, hey, we're going to be responsible drivers so we don't need them, then let them make that decision and let the other cities make their own. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative Majotti. Chair recognizes Representative Cook. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to rise and make a comment on this. Bill, Go ahead. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I've heard a lot about this debate, and I was excited to come in here and speak on this subject because I know quite a bit about it. I'm going to start off with uh, I've, I've enjoyed some of the comments my colleagues have said here tonight, and I strongly encourage everyone to vote for this bill, and I will lay out the groundwork why I support it so much. In my hometown of Globe, we had the cameras, nobody wanted the cameras, and a few people decided to put the cameras there. So what happened was, in a lengthy election, time and trouble, and costing the taxpayers money, finally we got rid of the cameras. What I heard one of my colleagues say, in Tucson, it took a few steps to get rid of those cameras. I think the public is overwhelmingly against cameras. So how many times should they be paying and going through the trouble while they're trying to go out and work and earn a living and raise their families while they're looking over their shoulder at Big Brother and these cameras? So I think it's time we get rid of the cameras. And I think all these cameras do is they continue to, to feed these municipalities and, and their habits when in fact the number one thing is we should be putting police officers on the street. Police officers should be out there and not a camera. A police officer can stop that car, can have interaction with those people, and make decisions based on human beings. We've become such a technology country and a state Everyone in here is on their phone. Everyone in here is on their computer. There's, they ha we, have, we are losing this human interaction. Now that is the number one safety is about police officers on the street. In Oklahoma, Timothy McVeigh was not captured by a camera. He was pulled over by, by Charlie Hanger, a, a DPS officer, an Oklahoma State trooper, after he had done the Oklahoma City bombing, 
for a traffic violation. The camera didn't catch him. The police officer caught him. Now, in Phoenix, I've got a colleague that I thank the world of in here that has a spouse that is a Phoenix police officer. And we've heard testimony from her about the safety of that police officer about a license plate, how that could put them in harm. Well, I want to bring up that the Phoenix, Phoenix that we are so concerned about public safety, the numbers I was just given are 500 police officers down. And in Tucson, 350 police officers down. The yellow lights traveling through Tempe and everything that I drive down here range from three to six seconds. Now, I'm supposed to know which town has which lights that are three to six seconds. And if you had police officers on these intersections by the school, which we should have anyway protecting our kids, we still would not need the camera. I can just go back and say, how many times should local governments that continue to change over put the burden on the back of the taxpayers and ignore the fact that they are down and they need to fund and put police officers on the street. So once again, my colleagues, I suggest that you vote for this bill. And what you're really going to do by, by voting yes for this bill is you are telling the municipalities you're not going to be the Big Brother 1986 book. You're, you want police officers on the street keeping your people safe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative Cook. Chair recognizes Representative Fries. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I rise to make a comment on the bill. Right, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, a, a, a while ago, Mr. Grantham mentioned talking in committee about data, and we had a, a little discussion in committee. And I explained to him that it's not just about data. Anybody can collect data. Data is worthless. Data alone is worthless. So it's about how you design the data collection. It's about how you analyze the data. You can find a study that says just about anything you want to try to support. In, today, in 2017, there's just about anything available online. And you can find somebody who did some study to prove just about anything you want. You, as the user and the reader and the user of the information, need to be astute enough to figure out when a study is valid, when you should believe the conclusions of a, a, a study that you read. You can't, I mean, we all know, you can't believe everything that's put in front of you today. Uh, so you have to be astute enough to, to decide this study here that says um, one thing is not valid because it's of poor design. They didn't do the proper statistical tests. The st st statistical significance isn't good enough to show a difference between two groups. So th there's many, many, many things that you need to take into account before you simply look at a bunch of numbers and believe what it's saying. So. What I explained in, in the committee is that, you know, I have a lot of training in, in clinical studies, in cohort studies, in before and after design, in what statistical test shows an association or, or what hazard ratio indicates that while controlling for DUI laws, while controlling for speed, while controlling for highway construction, while controlling for changes in laws, we are looking for does, does it still having a speeding camera affect the outcome of less crashes, less red light runnings. Those are the kind of studies you need to look for. And you have to be astute enough to say, I'm going to dismiss the conclusions of this study. They are not valid because they may have tons of data, but they designed the study poorly. They did not do the proper statistical test. Many, many things lead to many, many studies out there that can confuse and confound us. So you have to be smart enough to know which studies to believe. And the studies I read, I feel very comfortable saying, I believe that these, um, these uh, photo radar um, um, instruments reduce speeding in areas, particularly areas such as school zones. I believe that they reduce red light running. And I believe they reduce crashes. 
Um, so, and I also believe, as some of my colleagues already mentioned, that this is the decision we need to be leading up, leaving up to our cities and towns. So for those reasons, I'll be um, opposing the bill. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Freeze. Chair recognizes Representative Campbell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, may I make a comment, please? Yes, go ahead. Um, I oppose these cameras. I always have. I thought they, uh, they really were more of a revenue device than uh, safety devices. We had them out in our county, Yavapai County, terribly unpopular with the residents, uh, caused great consternation, and uh, we got rid of them. And I have talked to Mr. Grantham about this in, uh, in detail, and as much as I'm with him at 98% on his bill, there are certain areas that I think that cameras are appropriate, especially in a, in a school zone. I drove a school bus when I was in college, and I can't tell you how many times I had people go by that school bus with, even with the stop light, the stop sign out and the lights flashing. They just drove right through the intersection. And these young kids, they get off of the school bus and they run in front of the school bus and they run across the street. So in that instance, I would support cameras. And I would encourage Mr. Grantham, uh, as this bill moves forward, to put a, um, an amendment to it to allow uh, cameras to be installed either on school buses or at school intersections because we know the danger there. there. There's no denying that. And if we could save one child's life by uh, having people be aware that there are cameras at that intersection, then I think that would be appropriate. But with that, uh, I'm going to vote to push the bill along, and I hope that uh, Representative Grantham uh, can come forward and amend that bill somewhat to create that exemption. With that, I thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative Campbell. Chair recognizes Representative Bolding. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, rise to make a comment. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Uh, so speaking on House Bill 2525, I, I do rise in respectful opposition to this bill uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, primarily, we are sitting here having a debate over convenience versus safety. And, and I find it highly hypocritical to be in, in a body that talk so much about law and order and a respect for the law to now say that when you are breaking the law, it is now inconvenient to have to pay a ticket for breaking a law. So if you are speeding or you are uh, not following an ordinance, you're, you're breaking the law, so now you are supposed to pay a penalty. Because of the inconvenience of breaking a law, we now want to decide to change the method in which the law you have been found to be breaking the law. It's highly, highly hypocritical. So what, what we need to make sure that we are doing here is we are putting forth safety in our community to ensure that not only our children, uh, but our fellow drivers on the road, pedestrians, they have the ability to make sure that they're safe in their community. We can't stand here on one end and say that we are about law and order in this country and we want to make sure that we have safe communities and on the other end say it's inconvenient for us to be caught breaking the law. So we want to decide to change the tool that catches us breaking the law. Just how, how hypocritical does that sound? And I'm, and I'm interested to hear uh, the sponsor's comments as he, as he explains uh, in closing his bill regarding uh, taking away a tool that is providing an opportunity to make sure that our community uh, is safe primarily because it's catching people breaking the law and putting others at jeopardy. So there's been comments about uh, their revenue drivers, um, that they're just to make cities have uh, more money in their coffers, but from my knowledge, Photo radars don't just take photos of cars when they are going the speed limit. They're taking photos of license plates and of individuals when they're breaking the law. So we can choose to sit here and vote for this bill and say that, yes, we believe that we should take away tools that will 
uh, catch individuals breaking the law so we can have uh, more of a sort of this wild, wild west mentality here, or we can uh, vote to ensure that we have safe communities for our kids and our schools. So, uh, I mean, we'll have members of, of my party, I'm sure we'll have members of uh, the Republican Party, you know, standing against this bill for that, for the same reason that I mentioned, that again, if we are for law and order, and we want to ensure that our communities are safe, we're going to make sure that we have as many tools as possible to make sure that's taking place in our community. So again, think about what we're asking ourselves to do. Are we telling ourselves because the convenience the inconvenience of being caught breaking a law is so strong, we want to decide to take away the tool. And if that's what we decide to do, I hope that individuals in our communities ask us, why do we think that we, it's okay to put inconvenience over safety? Mr. Chair, thank you. Thank you, Representative Bowling. Chair recognizes Representative Engel. Mr. Chairman, I rise to make a comment about this bill. Go ahead, Representative. Uh, Thank you. Um, I agree with what many of my colleagues opposed to this bill have said about it. Uh, I was disappointed to see the initiative pass in Tucson, which took out red light cameras. But I am urged to, I am prompted to speak about how we enforce our traffic laws. And uh, it was good to hear that Representative Cook said we should actually uh, police our traffic laws and red lights, uh, but his solution was that we should have the police do it, and really there should be a police on every corner parked there to catch people that go through a red light. And i just like to say that's not how I think we should use our police resources. Uh, our cities are hurting, they've cut our police forces, and I think they've got better things to do. If we have a technological solution, that can catch people who go through red lights and protect our children, I think we should use it. We've talked a lot about the importance of technology in this body, so I think it's strange that we're not embracing the technology that works very well. It snaps a photo and shows somebody going through a red light. So, thank you very much. It's the only comment I'd like to make. Thank you, Representative Engel. Chair recognizes Representative Nutt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to give another perspective to this. This is fresh in my mind since last night. I got a blinding flash while I'm out on the road looking for a location. My GPS was going and I didn't know where I was. <laughs> Mr. Lawrence thinks I'm a criminal. Um, but I just want to put in a perspective that there are extenuating circumstances. It was a road I was unfamiliar with it was very dark, had no idea what the speed limit was, couldn't see it if I did. And so if there had been an officer there, I could have easily explained the situation to him. So I think that we need to understand that there are extenuating circumstances to things, and this is one of them. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Thank you Representative Dunn. Chair recognizes Representative Bowers. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it, may I make a comment? Yes, Representative Bowers, you may make a comment, In fact, sir. May, may I ask if Ms. Engel would yield? Well, who was that? Ms. Eng uh, Representative oh, Representative Engel. Engel, would you yield to a question from Representative Bowers? Oops. Ah, Mr. Chair, I'd be delighted to yield to a Representative question Representative Bowers, she Bowers. yields and thank is delighted to yield. Thank you. Well, I'm delighted to ask. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, Ms. Engel, in the idea of embracing technology, that we should embrace technology, I was reminded the other day that uh, many of the trucks that truck for uh, some of the larger firms have satellite GPS that follows them wherever they go and that they are unable to go above the speed limit uh, because it puts a governor in their vehicle and helps reduce fuel and and. Also, I think it, it makes it for safer driving. Would you, in as much as that's common throughout the United States, would you like us to embrace that in an amendment that we could have that installed in the vehicles of the residents of Maricopa County so that we could never 
go beyond the speed limit. We would always stop at the stoplights, and we would always be law-abiding citizens. What do you think? Um, Mr. Chairman, may I ask a question to Mr. Bowers? Representative Bowers, Representative Engel would love to ask you a question. Is Mr. It, and I'm sure it's in delight. Mr. Chairman, I believe that when you're asked a question, you can't answer with a question. I don't think you can answer a question with a question, so I guess that's a no. <laughs> okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Bowers, um, I'm just scratching my head to try to figure out the relevance of this question. So is that is this a comment then? Uh, no, it's an answer. It's an answer. Okay. Uh, the answer is I do not see the relevance of his question to our discussion of the use of technology to uh, capture people who are running red lights. And I think we've got to, we've got to focus on that because we do actually have a good technological solution to this very common problem. And I'd also like to put in that when a photo is taken of somebody going through those red lights, it does not mean they automatically get a ticket. Oh. A real person has to actually issue that ticket. So it's not an automatic thing. Uh, but it is, it is automatic in showing that somebody went through a red light. So that was my point about technology. And I look forward to having a debate with Mr. Bowers about other types of technologies that we might take advantage of, uh, some which are safer than others. Mr. Chairman, I would like to return to the point. Representative the point Bowers? Is, this technology gives all the context of a driver for the last how many hours. You would know exactly how many times they exceeded the speed limit, when they moved lanes without, I mean, it tells you, uh, Ms. Engel, when you turn on your blinker, when you change lanes, it gives all the information because insurance companies will use that information if there's an accident and go backwards to be able to determine who was at fault. It is extremely precise. It will tell you when that light, it, it correlates with the city, with the electronics of the city for the lights. It can tell you exactly when that light turns yellow, exactly when it turns red rel relative to six blocks of your moving coming up to it. It would be a great advancement over the mere snapshot of, of, a, of a red light camera or even the blink of a, a 15, 20 meter shot of you driving in your Ferrari. It would, it would be able to, to show you exactly what you were doing in a far larger context and far more accurately than this primitive technology of just the red light camera. Wouldn't you think that that would be better for the citizens of Arizona? Representative? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Engel. Representative Bowers, uh, I'm flattered that Representative Bowers thinks that I drive a Ferrari. Um, Maybe it's just I, you drove like you were driving a Ferrari. Through the chair. <laughs> and I'm also uh, curious. It sounds like Mr. Bowers himself is infatuated with this technology. So um, as I believe, that these decisions should be left up to the cities. Um, I encourage him to uh, reach out to wherever, I'm not sure exactly what city you are from, uh, to talk to them about whether or not this, this technology should be used. It may have some benefits. So. Th thank you, thank Representative you. Engel. Representative Bowers. Thank you, your closing comment. And that Go ahead, goes sir. back to the inter human interaction knowing all of the events, being able, if, if an officer, the, the thing about our country that makes it different than any country, our Constitution over any other Constitution, even those that are patterned after ours, is that it puts the emphasis on self-discipline. We will have a country as long as we are self-disciplined. To the extent we throw discipline away and we run more and more lights, no amount of cameras will keep a person from running a light and hurting somebody. No amount of cameras will keep somebody from abusing a spouse or, or any other ill in our society. It's the self-discipline that will keep us a country. When an officer can talk to you eyeball to eyeball, ask you, explain the infraction, ask if you know what you did, et cetera, et cetera, have a human interaction, possibly cite you. At least there's a human being speaking with a human being 
and taking that on-the-site data and that uh, on-site communication. I think that's far more valuable to have that type of respect granted through authority, and that's why I, su I would support this bill. I want that back. Thank you very much. Thank you, Representative Bowers. Representative Rubalcalva. Chair recognizes Representative Rubalcalva. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I rise for the point of making a comment. Go ahead, sir. Uh, yes, I, I find myself uh, kind of torn with this uh, issue here, with this uh, proposal, because I understand where uh, the author is trying to go um, with this. But um, since everyone is uh, expressing their, um, their perspective, I, I'm going to give you mine. Um, we have, in the community where I come from, uh, a situation where we don't have local uh, law enforcement, and we have to outsource. And uh, we outsource with Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, and they have to come out. We have one officer on duty. And then there's a time period when we don't have anybody on duty. And so from looking at, at it from a safety uh, perspective, um, I do think that if my town decided to put in cameras, that's their choice because that's the way they want to keep our community safe. That's the way they want to ensure that they're um, controlling the traffic flow in my community, but it's left up to them to do so. I think that what this is doing is it's tying the hands of our uh, cities and towns as to what they can and what they cannot do. And so for that same reason, I, I think it's we need to l let our communities decide what they need and when they need it. And um, I, I will be not supporting this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Representative Grantham, did you want to move your bill? Closing comments. Closing comments. Yes, sir. Well, I, I appreciate everybody's input on this bill, Mr. Chair, and, and, and it's a vigorous discussion. We had it in committee, and, and I enjoyed it. I, in the one and a half months or so I've served here, I feel like I've finally come full circle because we have the opposition party to this bill, which is mostly in one party, with the exception of Mr. Lawrence and maybe one or two others. who are now for the privatization of policing. I mean the privatization of law enforcement. What happened to the private prisons debate? That was coming from the folks on the other side of the aisle. That troubles me and I just want to hit on a few of the points as to why I ran this bill in my closing comments. State versus local. We're a national model, not a federalist model. The states, the ultimate authority, the cities, the towns, the districts, they derive their right, their power from us. That's how it works in Arizona. This is a statewide issue. I believe this is unconstitutional, meaning red light cameras. There's a Sixth Amendment to the US Constitution that affords us the right to due process to, to basically, in layman's terms, to face our accuser. That doesn't happen here. That troubles me. Statistics trouble me because as Dr. Fries so elegantly said, statistics can be created for whatever argument you want to make. I learned while studying this bill that some cities and towns across America were shortening yellow light times by up to a second to capture as many people as humanly possible inside the intersection, going the speed limit, as the light turned from yellow to red to maximize revenue. That is not who we are. I, I'm, I'm not obsessed with making it okay to break the law. My problem is breaking the law to catch people who we think are breaking the law. That, that's, a, that's a big problem. I think we've all heard about what's happened, fraud, CEO of one of these companies from this state just reported to federal prison a 30-month sentence for bribery. There's been other individuals in this industry 
recently in Chicago that have got caught working with elected officials, working with lobbyists to maximize the revenue generation out of this tool. Earlier in one of our committee of the holes, a representative said, organizations not based in Arizona that come into Arizona and influence the legislators are dangerous. Well, what about an Australian-owned company that comes to Arizona, sets up shop, and starts harvesting as many civil traffic violations as humanly possible off of our roads and our streets? That is not fair. That's why I ran this bill. I hope all of my Republican partners on the floor of the House will stay with me and stay with our party and fight to pass this bill and afford the citizens of our state, the residents of Arizona, the, the people of Arizona, the freedoms that they deserve from this type, of, this type of tyranny, this type of police state tactic. And with that, Mr. Chair, I close. Thank you, Representative Grantham. Uh, Chair recognizes Representative Martinez, but I did want to clarify, Mr. Martinez, that you have to ask a question on his closing comments to Representative Grantham. Speaker, pro tem, I stand to ask a question. I feel, will he yield to a question? Representative Grantham, will you yield to a question on your closing comments from Representative Martinez? Mr. Chair, at this point, I'd prefer not to and, uh, and move on. Thank you, sir. Representative Martinez, he does not. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none. The question before you then is that House Bill 2525 receive a due pass recommendation. All those in favor, vote aye. All those opposed, vote nay. Appears the ayes have it, do have it, so ordered. Clerk will read the next calendar on the bill. What's that? Clerk will read the next calendar on the bill then. Mr. Speaker, uh, House Bill 2529. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Campbell. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I stand in uh, for Representative Rivero, who is not here, and I move that the Committee of the Whole rise to report and recommend to the House HB 2529 receive a due pass recommendation. Thank you. R Mr. Campbell, did you want to also move the amendment? Yes, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I do. I move that uh, House Bill 2529 committee amendment as amendment no, I'm, the, the I'm, I take that floor back. Excuse amendment. me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, I've got it here. Just move the floor amendment to the right. bill. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that my floor amendment to House Bill 2529 uh, be adopted. Thank you. Any discussion? Any comment? Hearing none. Seeing none. The question before you then is that the floor amendment to House Bill 2529 be adopted. All those in favor, vote aye. aye. All those opposed, vote nay. Appears the ayes have it. Do have it so ordered. Did you want to? Move the bill as amended. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I move that uh, when the Committee of the Whole rises to report, it recommends that House Bill 2529 as amended do pass. Thank you. The question before any discussion? Seeing none, the question before you is that House Bill 2529 as amended receive a do pass recommendation. All those in favor vote aye. All those opposed vote nay. Appears the ayes have it. Do have it so ordered. The clerk will read the next calendar on the bill. House Bill 2530. Next. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Show. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move the Committee of the Whole Rise and Report. I recommend that House Bill 2530 be retained on the calendar. Thank you. The question before you, any discussion? Seeing none, the question before you is that House Bill 2530 be retained on the calendar. All those in favor, vote aye. All those in favor, vote nay. It appears the ayes have it. Do you have it so ordered? Chair, uh, the clerk will read the next bill on the calendar. 
House Bill 2533, Mr. Speaker, Committee rules and consideration. House Bill 2533 recommends Constitution Prop 4. Speaker, Committee on Appropriations as recommended that House Bill 2533 receive a due pass recommendation. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Norgard. Mr. Chairman, I move that when the Committee of the Whole rises to report, it recommends that House Bill 2533 do pass. Thank you. Any comment? Seeing none, any discussion? Chair recognizes Representative Cardenas. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Will Representative Norgard yield to questions on our bill? Yes, Representative sir. Norgard, will you, you yield to questions on your bill? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I will yield. Representative Cardenas, she yields. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Representative Norgard. I wanted to read a statement um, and then ask you a question based on the statement. So I looked up jdmesner.com backslash issues and uh, in, it, within the issue statement, it says, we must make sure that we have a system of educating that is accessible and affordable to make sure workers can get any training they need. At the same time, I am not in favor of special deals or carve-outs for big corporations. They need to follow the rules like everyone else. Uh, and Mr. Chair and Representative Norgard, do you agree with that statement? Representative Norgard. Um, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Cardenas, um, is that question germane to the bill? Representative Cardenas. Matt, uh, Mr. Chair, and I, I, I know she's, uh, she is the sponsor of the bill, but I'm, I'm the one that has been recognized to, answer, to ask a question. I'm wondering if she'll answer the question. Representative Norgard, did you want to a answer the question that he's, he's asked? Oh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Cardenas, that seems reasonable. Okay, so Representative Cardenas. So you and I are both Representative Cardenas, please go through the chair. I apologize, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair and Representative Norgard, so you and I are both in agreement that special deals or carve outs for big corporations are bad. Um, could you explain what this bill is? Okay. Representative Norgard. Mi Mr. Chairman and Mr. Cardenas, what this bill does, companies that have aircraft with fractional ownership. This allows them the same TPT exemptions as charter